All righty, so today's video is gonna be a little more serious than my other videos. I have a lot to comment on on my recent visits to Canada's Wonderland and things I've witnessed, comments I'm seeing on social media. I'm gonna try and respond to all the criticism that has been thrown at Canada's Wonderland. And let me tell you, there is a lot of positive feedback coming in about Canada's Wonderland, but of course the Karens on social media are keyboard worrying. Uh, <laughs> their feelings and emotions, and I actually got in a verbal fight with a Karen at Canada's Wonderland at a restaurant myself. I'm going to talk about everything that you're reading online and why it's not true and the reasoning behind what some of these people are experiencing and how tone deaf it actually is. So I really encourage anyone watching this video to please share this on their social media um, because Wonderland is definitely being casted in a light that it doesn't deserve. And there's a lot of fake stuff going around on TikTok um, and on Facebook, of course, the throne of Karens, of all Karens. But I'm gonna explain a couple of situations. I guess I'll start with the fight um, that I got in. So we were waiting for a burger at one of their really fancy burger places. It's called Muskoka Brewery at the back of the park. Now they make your food fresh to order, like right from your, when you order it, they'll make it from scratch. So of course it's gonna take longer than three minutes to get your food. Um, and when you throw in the global pandemic and a theme park that has been fighting tooth and nail for a year and a half to open, and the only way they've been allowed to open is through heavy restrictions uh, placed on them, it's gonna be a longer wait. So we waited about 20 minutes for our food um, and basically we were waiting to order and out of nowhere this lady comes screaming uh, up to the till and she's demanding a refund and her tip refunded and they were immediately refunding her by the way so they were already in the process of processing her uh, a refund and they were not fighting her. They were literally just listening and refunding, not putting up a fight for anything she was saying. They look terrified. I don't know if you've ever seen a Karen in a retail store. These, these employees handled it so professionally. Um, they literally just took the onslaught of insults and I just had enough. I couldn't sit there and watch it happen. So I got involved. I told her there is no reason for you to be yelling at an employee that is choosing to work during a pandemic. Um, it's the first day back and things are obviously going to be a little stressful. And she responded, well, you would be as mad as me if you waited an hour. And of course, this is what Karens do. They over-exaggerate numbers to make them look in the right. And I said, it's still no reason to be treating anyone like um, crap. And she responded with just like a smirk and a mmm. And she started to tone it down and I just got a little sassy and I said, well, you're not gonna get anywhere in life with that attitude. And that's when she stopped and she even said thank you when the refund was processed and that was the end of that story. With that being said, I wanna remind everyone, I did post a video three days ago. When you go to a theme park, especially a place that has so many restrictions uh, laid on them, you're gonna see staffing issues. You're gonna see things operating a lot slower than you normally would. And I would just please, please beg you to treat everyone with respect, especially in the first two weeks. Um, they've literally had about a month to get this park ready. And for anyone that knows, on top of getting the park ready, they can't start training until the rides and the restaurants are ready. So they've had to wait in this 30 days that they've been allowed to have their employees back and hiring. Uh, they've had 30 days to stock everything and then start training. So they've roughly had about a week of training um, in the restaurants, especially before opening. So definitely a lot of stress on the employees. So I just wanna remind everyone, please treat everyone with respect and go in uh, with patience because it's gonna take them about two more weeks to get the hang of things. And in fact, for anyone that's been to the park um, on Tuesday or today, uh, after the first day, you could already notice improvements. We went on Tuesday, we also went on Monday, and on Tuesday we saw vast improvements in operations in terms of trains dispatching a lot faster. That's what happens in any job. It's like when you hire a new employee, if you've been at a job or been a new employee at a job, you start off really slow and you start to get the hang of things each day that you go into work. It's the same at a theme park. And it was just really frustrating to see people expecting like the perfect experience on day one. That's never gonna be the case, um, especially when you have 30 days to prep a park and about a week to train everyone and get them ready for opening. 
With that being said, I'm going to go on to topic number two, and that is long wait times. So I totally understand why so many people do not understand what's going on with uh, the long wait times at a theme park. Not everyone understands how a theme park works. So I'm going to do my best to explain to you exactly why you're waiting longer for these rides with 25% capacity. So the park is limited to 25% capacity, but in order to open, they had to make really big cuts uh, to their capacity of their roller coasters and attractions. For example, I will use Leviathan as an example. So every other row is blocked off. And if you have any single riders or even two riders, they're gonna take up an entire row and it's gonna postpone the line by a lot. So instead of you know, being able to fit 32, 24, 12, depending on some flat rides, or, you know, 48 on some flat rides, whatever it is, uh, you're, you're fitting in half, if not, like, even less than half. For an example, a flat ride like Cyclone at Canada's Wonderland, I think they're only able to seat eight people per ride, when typically you can seat anywhere from 24 to 32. I don't know the actual numbers, um, but that's a huge cut in terms of people being able to board the ride. So for the average guest, you're sitting there and you're waiting and you're, you're kind of bothered because you're thinking 25% capacity in the park, there should be no lines on these rides, but that's simply not true. But again, I do understand the confusion um, if you don't understand um, how roller coasters and rides and theme parks operate. So I'm not placing any blame if you went on day one and day two and you were upset. I just want to explain it for everyone because there's a lot of confusion and a lot of anger over the, the wait times. That is one portion uh, to why you're waiting longer. They are cleaning the rides every 30 minutes to an hour. Um, and in the process of cleaning, what you have to do is they're literally spraying down the train with a sanitizer, wiping it, and then dispatching it empty uh, so it dries. So the sanitizer dries and it doesn't get on your clothes and stain them or anything. So when you add that in, that if some rides have three trains, that could be a whole 15, 20 minute process. Um, that is for everyone's safety and that's what they've had to agree to uh, in order to open. So again, please, please, patience is, vir is virtue. If you are choosing to go to Canada's Wonderland at this current moment in stage two, uh, there are heavy restrictions placed on the park and boy, did they actually blow it out of the park. I have to give this park huge compliments I am not trying to suck up to anyone. I swear to goodness that um, this park really is killing it. Uh, for the most part, uh, people are even doing their part. Masks are being worn in queue lines and buildings. The park is allowing you to even have your mask off in some portions of the park if it's not that busy. So if a midway, if you're walking here and you can see there's not a lot of people around, you actually can remove your mask so you can breathe a little easier. But the minute you join a queue line or go in a building or you're riding a ride, you have to have your mask on. And Wonderland actually won't dispatch the train or the ride until everyone puts their masks on. That is one way they're doing uh, to keep you safe. On top of that... Um, there's just a lot that they've put in place. There's plastic shields that they've had to order out of nowhere and install in the last 30 days. There's a lot of like tape down. And uh, of course there are some mostly teenagers in most cases that aren't necessarily respecting the distance in the queue lines. Um, and that could be confusion, that could be whatever. But in my opinion, how I look at it is I'm double vaccinated. We're getting really high in vaccinations. So I haven't been the same I was last year when I went to La Ronde in Quebec and I was really strict with anyone getting close to me. I've been a lot more relaxed myself. But nonetheless, um, a lot of people have been upset with... Um, I'm trying to think of what else other people have been upset with. I'm trying to remember all the comments that I've seen online. Oh, this is a big one. A lot of people were pointing out rides breaking down a lot. Um, and for those of you, at the beginning of the season in May, a lot of enthusiasts tend to visit parks, and we understand how theme parks operate. So again, Wonderland's had roughly uh, two days, essentially, to train each ride um, group at Canada's Wonderland and get them ready. Um, all these rides are beyond safe. I understand no one knows, anyone that's typically Canadian that isn't an enthusiast has no idea how a ride works. But when you're at Canada's Wonderland, you are actually <laughs> beyond safe and hardly anything will ever happen to you. When you see sites like Six Buzz or Narcity posting like, 
Leviathan or Behemoth stuck on Lift Hill, Rider stuck or Windseeker stuck at the top, that's actually its ride safety feature working and that is beyond safe. These rides have sensors throughout them that will tell a ride operator or tell the computer, hey, there's something wrong here. And what that does is it shuts the ride down in its place and the ride will not move until that safety um, error code is fixed or a maintenance worker can look at it and say like, okay, this is the problem, fix it and everything. I'm not going to go in total detail, nor do I have the ability to go into total detail, but I can promise you Canada's Wonderland is evaluated and held to TSSA standards, and on top of that, a North American audit standards um, and an evaluation that they go through on a very regular basis. All these rides at Canada's Wonderland are checked around five, starting at 5 a.m. every day for your safety. And on top of that, it's got a computer system that monitors everything from wind speed to weather uh, to uh, too much things passing by a sensor. So even if a bird flies by a ride or lands on the track, these coasters know that it's there and they will flag in most cases, almost all cases, that like even a bird is on the track. That is how safe these rides are. But when you throw in brand new employees, so I don't know if you notice when an employee dispatches a train, a lot of rides, all the employees have to push down on a button um, for the ride. That is them telling the ride that they have checked the restraints and the ride is okay to go on their end. So you'll notice all the employees move to a specific station after checking the restraints and they go all clear and their thumbs are up and then their one hand is down on a button, especially something like Leviathan, you'll see that there's like a lift start button and uh, a, a button that the person on the other side, like they're checking to make sure there's no people on the station platform and then the ride will dispatch. Now, when you have new employees, sometimes, you know, when you start a new job, you forget things and you may let go of the button a little too early and then the ride faults. So that's the computer system like, oh, the button was let go. Something's wrong when nothing's wrong at all. But the computer system will then force an override for a maintenance worker or an area supervisor to come by and then check that everything's okay. And then they will correct the situa situation with all employees and then the ride will be fixed and dispatched. So when the rides kept going down, um, especially these first couple days, it's usually for something very simple like that. Obviously rides break down all the time. It's when you have so many moving parts on a ride, uh, sensors constantly trigger things or you know something will break, but the ride has a safety feature. Let's say your restraints failed on a ride. All these rides at Canada's Wonderland have a second and third safety feature built into your restraint so that even if one thing breaks, that restraint ain't coming undone. And then you have your seatbelt, your, your very manual car seatbelt to help as a fourth security measure in a lot of cases. So I can promise you your safety at Canada's Wonderland is extremely safe again and nothing will ever happen to you. But... Um, I just wanted to touch on that. There was a lot of people complaining about rides breaking down. Again, that will also be sorted out. All the minor things, uh, there's a lot of minor things out there like, oh, the ride wait times aren't accurate on the app. It says five minutes, but it's really an hour and a half. Again, it's not taking into account uh, COVID restrictions. And on top of that, I don't even know if they've started their their whole app tracking like so basically what happens is a ride will call into operations and they'll be like okay I think I have like an hour wait and then operations will update their app again they've had 30 days to get this park ready and in those 30 days small things like that maybe weren't a priority and you'll see them to start come in coming in over the next couple weeks you'll even see there's a 40th anniversary merch store that isn't open yet that should be open soon all the restaurants aren't open all the drink stands aren't open it's because when you only have 30 days to hire um, it's nearly impossible to staff a, a theme park that needs about 2,000 to 5,000 typically a season to run at having all the restaurants opening all the rides open so when you see all these places closed and not all the the places fully staffed that is why give them another month typically they have about three to four months 
um, to hire and get everything ready. Wonderland usually starts hiring and getting ready for a season in January uh, to open in late April. So to put that into perspective, that's a long period of time that's been shrunk down to 30 days. Again, we were under restrictions where people weren't even allowed to go into work uh, to cut the grass at Canada's Wonderland or to hire at Canada's Wonderland. So that again, I just want to remind everyone, 30 days. So thank you so much for watching this video. It's just, it was bothering me. I was seeing Wonderland get a lot of slack for things that people maybe didn't fully understand. And I really wanted to come out in a video and explain in detail what was going wrong and how simple and innocent the problems that you guys are pointing out really are. And you're, some people are making it out to be a really big deal. Like all the rides are broken. Okay, well, I understand that's frustrating, but anyone who knows a theme park, you gotta give it two weeks, especially with the time frame that they've been handed to get their park open. I'm actually kind of surprised that they were able to have the park so clean and so many things open in that short time period. You really got to give management at that park and every ride employee, every employee at that park, a huge round of applause. I'm going to tell you, we have not had a bad experience at Canada's Wonderland. Again, I am not trying to toot their horn or paint a false picture here or a false narrative. Every drink stand we went to, the employees were super talkative. I think everyone's just excited to be back. People are excited to just be outdoors, not in their basements or their houses. I think everyone's just genuinely happy. We treat people with respect. We got treated with respect back. That seems to be the constant narrative with life. And that seems to be the equation to getting respect in life as well. So treat people how you would want to be treated. If you have children and your children were working anywhere, would you want them to be treated um, the way that maybe you're treating an employee at Canada's Wonderland? Most likely not. We got to remind ourselves, there are days where I go to places and I'm frustrated with the experience I'm getting, but I've never lost it on a an employee anywhere because first of all, I have social anxiety, so I never would. It would literally eat me away. Um, but Again, uh, it's really out of their hands and they're going to need time to uh, get used to these new measures and get used to the operations the way they are. Wonderland has a really distinct way of doing things normally, so this is very different for them as well. And uh, yeah, again, if you could share this on your social media for anyone that needs to hear it, I would really appreciate that. Um, I just want to get the message out there that nothing's going wrong at Canada's Wonderland. It's just new. It's temporary. Um, and they will fix it. Canada's Wonderland, again, is got the safest track record in North America for a theme park. Um, and they aren't going to ruin that. <laughs> Everything that you're seeing on social media is just blown out of proportion. And honestly, if any of you have any questions about anything at Canada's Wonderland that's going wrong or that you're frustrated with, feel free to comment it down below. And I will do my best to answer it to my knowledge. Again, you will only get 100% accurate information if you're messaging the park. I do not work for Canada's Wonderland nor represent them. I am simply just providing my knowledge of Canada's Wonderland and what I know is going on at the moment um, to help calm anyone that might be frustrated or angry down. Um, with that being said, um, for anyone that has a season pass, just a reminder that your season pass is good until Labor Day next year. That's a really good deal. You're getting a fabulous deal out of that. Um, and for anyone that is extremely hot at Canada's Wonderland, adding to the frustration of these long wait times due to COVID restrictions, just remember that you can bring an empty water bottle into the park and they have water bottle refill stations if you don't have money for a drink plan. If you do have around $38 after tax for a drink plan, I highly suggest it. You get a free beverage every 15 minutes and it's extremely needed. You can get water out of those fountains with the free beverages or you can get pop. So if you need sugar at some point in the day to get you through, you got both. Definitely worth your value. And if you're a family, the meal plan is a huge benefit if you're going to visit around four times or more. Um, I'm trying to think if there's any other suggestions. I would book early, plan your visits early. The reservations are picking up now and days are becoming unavailable. Splashworks is really reserved up. Um, so definitely get those dates reserved. I'm trying to think if there's anything else I could honestly provide um, in terms of feedback. Uh, I would just again say, 
just be respectful. Go to the park with an understanding that you will need to be patient. You may not be able to get all rides done in one visit, so get a season pass and visit multiple times. And my honest suggestion would be to visit on weekdays currently. They seem to be the lesser of two evils. (laughs) Um, And uh, a third uh, suggestion or fourth, I don't even know what number I'm on, is to... I just completely forgot it. It just slipped my mind. Oh, there it is. (laughs) I feel like Dory from Nemo. If it's going to rain or rain is in the forecast, Canada's Wonderland does operate their rides in the rain unless there is lightning. So if you do not mind um, a little rain or getting wet, I would still go to Canada's Wonderland because it's most likely going to be dead and those rides are going to be walk-ons. So it could be um, an amazing treat to go on a rain day at Canada's Wonderland. I, I'm trying to suggest that to everyone because the weather is so out of control lately. It feels like Florida over here in terms of it's always forecasted to rain and it's super hot. But yeah, if it's going to rain, I would go. Uh, definitely, uh, it's going to be a lot less busy if the rain's in the forecast. Anyways, thanks so much for watching my video. I think this is a really long one. I apologize. I just really wanted to cover a couple topics. And thank you so much for watching my channel and supporting. Uh, definitely hit that subscribe button if you're a new viewer. And uh, I promise you, uh, we have lots of Canada's Wonderland content to cover, especially our 2022 new additions and a potential 2023 coaster that we're going to be watching. Again, potential is the key word. But nonetheless, thanks so much for watching, guys. Have a good one. Bye.